All right, are you guys ready? Wait, what is this? Inside sources in cargo, uh, embargo, no, Largo. Okay. The big achievement that we've done with this location, it's a great new addition for, for gameplay. It's just a whole new ex thing to experience in there with, with, uh, with, I, can I just say, I'm really happy with this. <laughs> oh shit, dude, this guy's got some hair. Like in a good way. So with Star Citizen and our focus on careers, we wanted to be able to create uh, points of interest for the players to go to. With 311, we're taking our next step in realizing this, and that is the additions of cargo decks. In the past, we've had these big multidisciplinary kickoffs, but hey, for the- No, I don't think it's a ship. It's like, it's part of the station, Baker. For the cargo decks, this was this time it was different. This time we had a kickoff, but it was just with the art director and just with uh, narrative and we were able to focus on a, a, a bigger picture. That guy's got like a studio in his house. We That's discussed. sick. We want these to be port stations. We knew that, you know, we could do it very simply if we wanted to with just sort of a, a console. But at the same time, we kind of knew that we wanted to create a sort of unique cargo focused experience for the player, which would involve a new environment. Which yeah, is I know where the we name. came up with the idea of having a sort of discrete separate deck. So these are major stations where all the cargo funnels into and then is distributed into other areas from there. Some of the inspirations we've been looking at, um, obviously like we draw heavy inspiration from existing cargo infrastructure in the real world. And then it's always about sort of adding the Star Citizen sci-fi shine to that. I'm still trying to feel, how do I feel about the cargo decks? For you guys, you guys who are traders, are you guys excited about this? Are you guys like excited? Because I think with the cargo decks, they're adding the wait time for like the trade timers. Are you guys excited about this? They look cool. I think they look cool too. I'm trying to decide how I feel about them. I don't know. I, uh, they, uh, yeah, they look cool. I, I hope it, I, I hope it's really cool. In, in a location like the cargo decks, audio yeah, I'm not sure yet either. A very important role in conveying life, busyness, commotion. You know, we, we work very, very closely with visuals. It's important. Visuals, you know, we were mm -hmm. kind of like right exactly. there with them. You want to, to build off of what you're seeing, uh, but in a lot of cases, you need to build off of what you can't see, what's unseen. Uh, audio has a very important job to, to, to make you feel that there's life, even when there's none. That's true. Not much. Audio is huge. So with 311, we've taken our first step in... I do like the fact that they made each cargo deck look different, like from visually from the outside. They didn't just like copy paste the same one on every station. I thought that was really cool when honestly they could have and I wouldn't have minded that like the same way with the capital ship docks. I, I don't mind that they all look the same. I think they look great. What our cargo decks will eventually be the exterior of the space stations. We've added cargo storage areas so that um, it helps flesh out, you know, from a silhouette perspective, what's the the station is focusing on and doing. If you fly close enough, you should see that they hold up pretty well um, to those cargo modules. And I would say that the cargo modules themselves on the exterior are super fun to fly through. And that was on purpose. That so was on purpose. The player purpose. accesses the cargo deck from an elevator. And it's Yo, wait, hold on guys. What did that say? Major unexpected torque imbalance. Okay. I wonder what that means. The longer it takes to sell cargo, the more chances to crash. That's true. That is true. This game has the potential to be the nuttiest game ever. That's true. That is also true. It's, uh, we just need a little more time baking in the oven. Um, yeah, we'll see. I think these next like two years are going to be really critical to see uh, what uh, after Squadron 42 comes out. We'll see like, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's nothing to do with the video though. So the player accesses the cargo deck from an elevator and essentially they come out of an elevator into Just the give it a decade. Um, it's not the, it's not a super huge space. One more. Uh, the cargo deck, but it, Just it two does decades. give you that impression of... Um, a really large scale sort of warehouse and, and the work going on around you. It looks great. Yeah. For us in, in audio, Visually, it looks uh, we achieve a, awesome. a sense of life with layers. Project 
Hello? Pick up for Johnny. Especially for cargo location, our initiative was to have a really good middle ground layer. The big thing we added this time was call-outs, these, these disembodied voices that um, that we would put, you know, a verticality, uh, give us a sense of verticality. We would put it up above a little bit and, and really make the space feel large. So you'll come out of the elevator and you'll enter into a sort of large sort of thoroughfare that we have running through the center of the space. And then um, there'll also be this large warehouse area full of containers and uh, sort of hustle and bustle going on and the tannoy announcements and things. So that's where the sort of the impression of the main sort of working space of the cargo deck is going to be. But the thing the player is really going to be interested in heading towards is the cargo shop, which will be right, let's sort see. of immediately visible let's see as it. you come out of the elevator. And going into I'm the cargo in. shop, the cargo shop itself is another reasonably large shop. Um, containing racks of like supplies and the sort of, as if as if the supplies in the shop have been taken out of the larger containers from the warehouse outside as if they're sort of breaking the contents of the containers down ready for sort of distribution but the shop also breaks the contents of the containers down ready for cargo guild master office okay cool for sort of distribution but the shop also contains functionality for the player to sort of do their cargo related i didn't say guide master i i can't which read which will involve like an admin desk for doing sort of cargo trading but there's also a small supplies shop in the cargo shop that that sort of has that gives the player access to sort of buy more sort of utilitarian or workman like um supplies as well I think the team did a great job in in getting the look and feel right on the cargo decks um, from the exterior and as well as interior. Transit Guild? That's uh, really got it. our first step into it. And then as we go on, this allows us to build on the foundation for future patches. From what I've seen from this game for the last two years, three more years, and this game will probably be pretty good. I don't know. Yeah, no, I have total faith in the game, honestly, and in CIG. Uh, but what I've done is I've stopped, I've stopped raising my expectations and my hopes up. And that always sounds so pessimistic and like negative towards the development whenever I say it that way. But it's just like, listen, guys, the only thing the roadmap is good for is disappointing yourself. No joke. The only thing the roadmap is good for is disappointing yourself. You see something on there that you like, and then it just disappears a week later. And again, this is not a knock to the development, but I think the roadmap is a dumb idea. I think it's a stupid idea. I always have thought it was a stupid idea. I think that uh, when it comes to stuff like this or when it comes to whatever, right? It's like, it's hard to guess how long things take to make. Like if you gave me $2 million and said, go make, you know, go make uh, uh, another Avenger movie or Star Wars fan movie or whatever, doesn't matter. I could maybe give you a guesstimate of how long it was going to take, but really, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's ultimately it's a guessing game is what it is. So uh, I, I think that's a lot of what this is. So is it going to be done in the next two to three years? Maybe we'll see. Uh, I hope so. But uh, yeah, I just I'm happy with what they're doing now. And hopefully I'm going to continue to be happy with what they're doing. And I'm not going to put too many eggs in the same basket. You know what I mean? Completely understand lowering your expectations. My heart got broken with the Daisy standalone. Yeah, you know, and I think that it's like really hard for us as people like gamers to, you know, because we get excited. You know what I mean? We just want to, we just want to play the game. We don't want to deal with all this crap, right? We don't care. Like it, at the end of the day, it's like, I know people say they care, but at the end of the day, people don't really care about like the development of like this or the progress of this. They just want to play it. Obviously, they care, but you know what I mean. At the end of the day, people just want to play it. So it's like the sooner you can get your hands on it, the better. But it's like almost like the the fact of not knowing. Like if if they just dropped the Mercury Star Runner tomorrow and didn't tell anyone, it'd almost be better than telling us it was coming three months ago, delaying it, and then, oh, it's coming again, and then delaying it, and it's coming again and delaying it, then just like dropping it. They, you know, same thing, uh, I think. That's just the way that I, I feel like my expectations are set up. I'd rather just get things like as a surprise um, and like, hey, this is what's done now. Do you know what I mean? Don't forget about those spicy leaks. Yeah, it's hard to manage it because there are a lot of weak leaks, most definitely.
Always better at under promise and over deliver? Most definitely. I expect the talent to be delayed and I expect the Mercury Star Runner to be delayed. Yeah, I think that that's just kind of how these things go. Uh, and I'm, I'm not really, yeah, I'm not really disappointed. I just, uh, yeah, it's just about leveling your expectations. If it comes out, awesome. If not, then, you know, take a, take a deep breath. You know, go, uh, you know, go maybe play something else or uh, the, the, go, I don't know, hide your caterpillar inside of a station and make some money. And No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. And um, uh, just wait till 311, I guess. You know, it's uh, it, it's going to take a while no matter what, right? Us, us complaining isn't going to make it speed up, unfortunately. So... Uh, um, whether that be if complaining could speed up star citizen it would have been done years ago let's be honest let's be honest um, and they're tying into the corporations and you building reputation with them um, or for basically side ventures if, if you're a mercenary or you're, you're a pirate yeah no shell totally and but the problem is is that the community doesn't know how to handle it i know what you're saying the problem is the community doesn't know how to handle it and we've proven that right we've proven that it's like you just can't win dude like in game development like this it's it's a very strange thing what star citizen has done any thoughts on cyberpunk 2077 uh we'll talk about that after this attack i think it'll be a good game colors. um and then this also allows us to start really working on our guild system and and basically it which would relate to is perks or um specific missions or or uh gifts associated with you that's know, cool that, that guild system that you've chosen um so i hope you perks everybody, uh, sees did i hear him as, say that as, right he as, said perks milestone is, as that's I cool do, um in our journey guild system on, perks on rewards out these decks and and um really flushing out the universe why does guy have a card catalog i don't these know new cargo decks that set the stage for a multitude of improvements and additions to industrial occupations and star citizens future are just one of the many new groundwork inclusions or feature iterations coming online in the upcoming alpha 311 and as isc takes its hiatus at the end of this quarter we're going to take one more look at some of the things coming our way in the patch report please Patch report. In addition to the cargo decks we just learned about, there are a number of location-based improvements coming to the entirety of the Stanton system, with the repainting of all existing planets and moons using our updated library of geology assets, updated ground textures, and improved tessellation and displacement of scattered objects across their surfaces. Now, it may seem like a small touch, but these continuing improvements are a hallmark of Star Citizen's dedication towards yeah, iteration bad. and the continuing evolution of its content and features. You'll also be able to travel to those updated locations in the new 100 series of spacecraft from I'll Oregon. be honest, when they first showed this, what is it right here? When they first showed this, I thought this was the before and I thought this was the after. I, I couldn't tell the difference. You'll also be able to travel to those updated locations in the new 100 series of spacecraft from Origin. Whether that's the model of efficiency, Let's to drive over. Eye, yeah, with its that's exactly why I'm style and comfort and fuel. If them repainting the planets mean that you can actually drive your ground vehicles without hitting a bazillion rocks, then I'm all for it. Performance to match. The heart of the Warrior 125A with its souped up weapons package that shows you don't have to sacrifice elegance for firepower or the life of the party mm. 135c with a deceptively what that increased means. Gonna be good. capacity that shows you've got more on the inside than others might expect arriving a little later but still in the alpha 311 branch is the mercury star runner designed to raise the bar on speed and efficiency while remaining a stalwart of reliability it's coming boys this data running cargo hauling something about smuggling ship is scheduled no. to make its debut in no. the star citizen persistent universe it doesn't in do a that subsequent 311 x patch and is poised to become a system-wide favorite if it isn't already <laughs> the front end experience for players when they launch Star Citizen has received a full conversion to building blocks, providing an improved reliability overall and several quality of life improvements. More importantly, this conversion creates a modular this and sustainable platform better. that sets the stage for future iteration and improvement to come. I do like this, I won't lie. In addition to the bearing BR2 ballistic shotgun that looks to reward more precision-oriented players with improved effectiveness at greater distances, 
Alpha 311 is also seeing Star Citizen's first grenade what? launcher in the GP33. And it remains to be seen That's if this I will become like. a weapon that kills as many of its wielders as it does its targets. And as it does in my unskilled hands. We've also got three new iterations it looks great. It looks great. It looks great. But I'm really not excited to fight that thing in Star Marine. Not that I play Star Marine. It doesn't matter. Whatever. From the actor feature team aimed at providing a more compelling and more visceral player experience. Like Force Reactions V2, where yep. new twitches and knockdowns I, from I direct and indirect forces will impact the player in new and exciting ways. While the sustained <laughs> forces OP at all, from yeah. ship movement now transfer... If they don't make guns like that in the railgun and whatever like kind of like halo style make them special weapons that you find on the map then i'll be i'll be shocked i'll be shocked this is gonna be cool i think so probably one of the things i'm most excited for coming in 311 if it's coming in 311 is force reactions i just like think of this idea of getting hit by a torpedo like a character getting hit by a torpedo and then like the ship shaking around and if you're not sitting down, then you like fumble around. That sounds awesome to me, honestly. To the occupants within. When 311 releasing? And uh, if they're not careful, ]ish. potentially devastating knockdowns of their own. There's also the refactoring of our new throw and item handling system that provides an augmented reality visualization to help players hit their targets, streamlines the you guys like that? between overhand and underhand tosses, and adds a carryable state to usables like Do you guys like the and med pins. Let's not forget the new building blocks grid and force reactions are backwards. What do you mean? Whatever Chris Roberts says. So I, I would imagine that it's probably going to release before the first, but we'll see. We'll see. I think PTU will probably be before the first. Yeah, I'm talking about the grenade lobbing line. Do you guys like that? Do you guys think that looks good? He would have been thrown out the window. Mm, true, unless the unless the uh, vehicle he was in was moving backwards or he was sitting still, right? The object was moving forward, so we got knocked back. Yeah, is that not right? Like if I'm sitting here and I'm still, and someone pushes me as hard as they can, I'm going to go backwards, not forwards, right? Now, if both ships are moving forward, then yeah, maybe. Objects in motion stay in motion. Yeah, freaking awesome. Like maybe only have that line if you have a helmet on. That'd be kind of cool, right? Like, and then make it toggleable for sure. Mass times acceleration. Uh, okay, yeah. Hey, listen, guys. Hey, my hands are up. All right, listen. All right, <laughs> don't get hostile on me. I'm not the one making the force of reactions. All right, if you have something to say about like the way of the inertia works or whatever, then, you know, say to CIG. I, as far as I know, that looks right to me. I don't know. I guess I'm just a smooth brain moron, but uh, that looks right to me. If you're not careful, His ship is sitting still. Careful, potentially devastating. He gets hit and then he gets pushed back. Is that wrong? I don't know. Knockdowns of their own. There's also the refactoring of our new throw nice hair. Thank and item you. handling system that I provides an augmented reality visualization to help players hit their targets, streamlines the switch between overhand and underhand. Ship is moving. Tosses, the one that hits him and is the only one moving. Only is ship moving. Like grenades and med pins. Let's not forget the Yo, new Clux, building blocks up, grid interface for player inventory that separates the storage between backpack, chest, and pants, and the ability to transfer between them while adding new functionality that allows players to yeah, access we've seen this. This looks external to the good. player, Practically like the it looks one good. at the back of the Grey Cat Rock, and more in the future. I don't know how There's I feel about the visuals, but... There's also new improvements to the prison system coming online in Alpha 311. Now, we hope you don't have to go, but just in case you do, the new commissary vending machines will allow players to buy things like food, this is water, good. O2, med pens, and more to help with your stay. While additional options for those who maybe want to leave a bit earlier have been added that, well, we're not going to spoil here. Additionally, there are a wealth of improvements to the law system and the upcoming removal of green zones around space stations that are simply too numerous and detailed to go into here. So be sure you check out the dedicated post on Spectrum for all the relevant details. So what did we learn this quarter? 
Well, we learned that brands can be used to help refine gameplay balance decisions. That the Grey Cat Rock, Asperia Talon, and 100 series bring new functionality and style to planetside and spacefaring activities. Hey guys, calm down, take a deep breath. We're gonna be okay, all right? Listen up, hey, guys, we're gonna be okay. <laughs> I'm sure they'll figure it out. <laughs> all right, listen up, you fucking idiots. He should fly to the left at exactly a 130 degree angle. No, hey, listen, guys, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Hey, if you guys seriously, if you have something wrong with uh, the way that the physics work, it lets the IG know. They'll probably, they'll probably want to uh, make it work properly. He's alike. That gameplay story is dedicated to keeping players inside the action whenever possible. That having gas My is immersion. a good thing when it comes Your to space. Your immersion's gonna be fine. And that when the contents are under pressure, explosions can be used to tell a story. That rebuilding the front end today means improvements and new functionality for players tomorrow. That game dev is an ever evolving process with continuing iterations to throw, force reactions, inventory, weapons, and more. And that cargo decks are the next major step in a journey that will bring with it a robust and rewarding gameplay experience to those of a more industrial persuasion. And that's not even counting all the sprint reports. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next month. Hell yeah, that's the end of it, boys. That's the whole thing. GG. Yeah, I don't feel like I have anything else to say about it. I, I thought that was a pretty straightforward episode.